I'm Brian Seth Hurston, Los Angeles. And I'm Alison Norrington in London, and welcome to the Story Hour. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell if you want to be notified of our next episode, like us, and feel free to comment. The Story Hour sits at the intersection of storytelling and technology. We bring you the story behind the stories, how it's written, how it's produced, how it's distributed, and even the personal stories behind the storytellers themselves. We talk with the master writers, producers, directors, authors, and technologists, covering it all from film and television to literature, virtual and augmented reality, and more, as well as the innovations in production, technology, and distribution that are changing the how of storytelling. Our guests today are the founders of Stornaway.io, a new drag and drop application that lets video producers create interactive, branching narrative stories quickly, easily, without coding. They launched recently in lockdown. I've been working with television production companies and film schools. Rue Howe and Kate Dimbleby launched Stornaway in May 2020, with Rue directing their interactive short, Life Moves Pretty Fast, which was recently released at Immersive Encounters 2020. He was the first mobile video blogger in the mid-2000s, long before iPhones and apps, and he made the first ever interactive film on YouTube in 2008 called Indecision. For over 25 years, Kate has been a producer, writer, and performer. She's recorded six albums and has toured the world with theatrical music shows, working with world-class musicians. Her work is increasingly focused on interactivity and improvisation, and her 2017 album was described by Tom Robinson of BBC Radio as, quote, an artist absolutely at the top of her game, unquote. Kate has developed a structure for writing and developing her ideas to allow for maximum creative freedom and flexibility, particularly live on stage, which is at the heart of Stornaway's creative writing tools. Please welcome Kate, Rue and Stornaway. Hello. 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 <laughs> well, we're, we are going to have so much to talk about. We know we're going to do two episodes with you. But there's so much to talk about, the, just the history, the journey that the two of you have taken. Um, and that's just as professionals. We're not even talking about as a couple. So <laughs> because Allison knows you better than I, I'm going to turn it over to Allison for our interview to begin. <laughs> OK, very nice. Thank you, Brian. So, yes, I do know you. And we actually only met this year, too. But we had so many conversations since that first moment. And I know that, you know, there's this always the idea of a beginning, middle and an end of every story. But I think the interactive element seems to switch that up a bit. But I would like to start somewhere on your timeline, which I think was probably a couple of years ago. And Rue, you were working in broadcasts at the time, but merging technology into what you were doing. Like, I'm fascinated. What was that light bulb moment for you where you realised that you had to take this further? It had been uh, it had been going on in the back of my brain for a really long time, um, and and I suppose we we'd been talking about it for a really long time, and it had been building to a point where I was waiting for that moment of streaming technology and audience behaviour and sort of demand that would obviously I felt would obviously come where we were all watching streaming shows on our couches you know on smart tvs and uh you know beyond just watching them on little screens on phones but where we were being drawn ever more into making choices and being prompted to watch something at the end of every video that we watched where we used to lean back we were leaning forward a lot more and you know previously you mentioned the video i made in in youtube in 2008 that was part of a whole series of different i've been tinkering with film and TV and video for a really long time and uh, and always frustrated with the A, the interfaces and how clunky it was when you tried to stick different bits of short form video together, but also just how difficult it was to author different creative nonlinear pieces of video because either the tools were sort of closed and proprietary or they were not easy to use or they didn't do the whole thing. Um, they just weren't very easy to use for creators. I wanted the kind of tools that you could, you, you know, that you would see things like WordPress and Squarespace that have emerged for web design, those sort of things to be able to pull video together. And for video editing, I've been working 
uh, alongside making things, helping video producers and technologists talk to each other in both uh, nonlinear editing and you know the whole transition from linear production to to digital nonlinear production in traditional broadcast and 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 then moving newspapers and other publications over to uh, smaller and smaller forms of video production, um, but also you know giving producers tools to to tap their archive and to you know access uh all you know digitized archives and all sorts of different clips and and always the problem is that tools are designed by engineers for engineers and not and you know and then the whole bunch of user experience and user design work has to happen to help producers use it and so we want i wanted to kind of create something that was designed for producers like me from the from the off Sounds really cool. I, I want to go back a little bit because, you know, this is the answer that you came up with, but it was a journey to that. I mean, it was a journey from the from the frustration of of the way storytelling was going. Um, you both had interacted with audiences, Kate, you in in live reality, and so there's something in here that kind of I I want to go back in the journey because some of our viewers and listeners. Um, you know, they're at a place and we always love to hear the stories of how people got from A to B or even A to Z and how that all developed. Um, and, you know, the two of you, I don't, I, the very personal questions. Um, how long have you been together? 20 years, almost yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so in the, in the, of course, everyone's phones are ringing. Excuse me, won't you? <laughs> I'll just fix that. But in the meantime, <laughs> um, if you could tell us like how you met and and obviously you had like two separate careers along the way and then yeah. ended up in collaboration. So I'd love to know more about that. I mean, I think if you if you go right <laughs> While Brian answers his phone, um, <laughs> if you go right back, you know, there's before Ru, before I met Rue, he was a little boy trying to code Choose Your Own Adventure books, you know, it, back in the 80s, like so many other little boys. Um, I don't know if they were all trying to code it, but, you know, those those books where you choose the ending, he's got a couple here. And Always I, I was never into those books. I, I wasn't really into gaming as such, you know. I was into stories and telling stories. And so when we met, in fact, I was um it was the first night, it was the press night of a show I did about the singer Peggy Lee. And Rupert was there with a bunch of flowers, and uh, <laughs> the rest is history. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. I wasn't a crazy random stalker. We had <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, fine. I'm following this woman around and now I've got flowers for her. And yeah, my first choose your own adventure is going to be, I'm going to give this woman flowers and see what happens. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've known each other for a while. And in fact, I, you know, we both had theater backgrounds because at university, Rue cast me in a show of Under Milk Wood, you know, so the kind of theater background was always there, wasn't it? Um, yeah, in fact, I, could, I don't know if you can see in a wide shot, there's a, I haven't talked about that for a long time, yeah. but there's a poster of it up in the background up behind us. Under Milkwood, Dylan yeah. Thomas's. And, and actually that's quite a good lead in because, you know, at the heart of those stories um, is the voice and the authorial voice, you know, and, um, and I think, and in my career, telling stories about women who maybe haven't been, um, uh, whose stories haven't been heard that much, um, uh, it's always about can I get as close to that voice as possible because I think if I get close to the voice I'll tell the story and I think where our paths kind of converged was that when Rue was mucking about with video online and, and connecting with this kind of quite exciting group of video bloggers who were changing the world with the technology and you know out of that came YouTube and Twitter and all this stuff um, we both the thing that was most exciting was how do I connect directly from here out there and and like make exciting stories happen, you know? So I think that's, you know, I would say that's, is that a good sum, summary yeah, of where our interests? Yeah, I think you're, I mean, what's also interesting is the stru structure of, I haven't really thought about this, before, yeah. we haven't talked about this before, but oh, yeah. I think we talked a bit about it, but the, the structure of Kate's shows as she put them together, because they were, very often based around telling the stories of women's lives based around songs. 
they were modular in yeah. some way and and you know that sort of sense passes through into what we're doing now where there would be words and songs in support of each other in sections that as you worked with particularly with Cal the crystal director you would take apart shows that had been authored as long reform narrative and start actually breaking them up into moments that yeah. actually could be moved around in interesting ways and and layers yes. and yeah, yeah. and that as Kate started moving through different types of shows based on different parts of your life or other women's lives or connecting different types of songs uh told from different perspectives yeah. there was this sort of sense of modular layering of these elements of voice word song and always the audience in the room so you know it didn't matter you would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse right. all your modular yeah. bits and then when the audience came in the room, you would see that show change every single night. It would be a different show, depending on how you felt, how they felt, how they received it. It would like this lovely dialogue happened. And I think, you know, Ruth, I, Ruth stood in the back watching that. I watched them a lot. Yeah, I was number one fan. I was the groupie. I was the domestic roadie uh, when we had children. But also before that, you know, generally road manager, you know, groupie carrier you know, person. But I, I, um, but I was... But, you know, also saw that process of writing these shows through the writing process and then the rehearsal process. And obviously you had worked a bit, a little bit in theatre at university school and after. But seeing that sort of work professionally through these devised shows was was very different from the film production workflow. And I think uh, there are there are yeah. so many things in common when I listen to you speak. So, for example, and and. Allison, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but you know, as a writer, sometimes you are literally uh, putting things up on the board. You are, if you're writing a book, you're putting the chapter order and you're putting what you cover up on the board and you're relating one chapter to the next. And then suddenly we entered this two-way universe um, where, and I suppose the extreme expression of it is fan fiction, but suddenly you have a two-way universe where even if you are, if you're writing a television series, you're going to get feedback from your audience. All of a sudden, you're going to know how they feel and they're going to start talking about your characters, if not becoming your characters on social media. So then all of a sudden you have this level of audience interaction. So you have you have the initial process of storytelling and organization. You present, which is I'm, I'm going by your parallel, Kate. You present and then the feedback of the audience influences where you go next or it, it, it could be very subtle or it could be very you know explicit but nevertheless they're having an impact on the story so then what i think and correct me if i'm wrong again then what i think you've done is you've gone okay this ecosystem exists but the tools to play within this ecosystem easily don't yeah and so I, Rue, I, Kate, we are going to create this for us first because it doesn't exist. Yeah. And, and then knowing that you were probably, what you're creating, and I'm, I, was this the realization while you were doing it, like all of a sudden as it evolves, you go, you know what, this is easy for any storyteller. So like, I mean, that's, one, that's the impression I was getting. Anytime you want to write our marketing copy, just let us know <laughs> what your rate is. That's yeah, it's great, absolutely, absolutely. And that is, is emergent over quite a long period of time of working together on those different projects and seeing how that comes together. And and the frustration of, I mean, in a good way, that frustration of you know different writing projects that I've had as well as Kate's had, where we've wanted to combine different forms of media. I mean, where where we are now, we're starting with Stornoway. It's very video focused, and you know, it's about creating branching video narratives. And our vision for that as an authoring tool of all kinds of branching multi-linear, non-linear, multi-perspective narratives is sort of greater than that into multiple different types of media. But we're starting with this because it feels like it's a, a moment in time for that. So um, we have a few, a few assets that you send us, and I'm wondering if they can't help but enhance our discussion. And so uh, let me pull up the first one that Allison has suggested we look at first um, <laughs> using my uh directorial capabilities and so the kitchen wall this is the kitchen wall image right <laughs> uh, um, this is like kitchen I like wall this specifically because 
Often when I work with writers, storytellers, students, um, the mapping of an interactive narrative begins to feel easy, but then actually when you get into it, it's not. And I think perhaps, Kate, from your experiences on stage with a live audience, mm -hmm. um, people don't react how you think they're going to react. And there's also a skill in terms of the pacing and the timing, right? When do you put in that first call to action, that decision point? How long do you make people wait? You know, some of my very early work back in like 2006, I made people wait 69 chapters to make a decision and then wondered why they didn't make a decision, right? So, <laughs> so I've got the battle scars to prove my failures. Um, but the point is with, with this, and that's why I love this image of the map, which I now can't see, but... Um, yes, I don't know why it disappeared. <laughs> it's gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> so what, was, what was the process? Like how beyond like being on stage, looking people in the eye and feeling this is the right moment or not, how did you begin to craft the design thinking underneath interactive narrative? Well, I think, you know, um, theatre, we have the idea of story islands and, and we, in Stornoway, we call each of those little squares of paper a story island. And in Stornoway, that story island contains everything, the script, the video, the, you know, it contains the whole lot. And in a way, it means like a sequence or a, a, a chapter, a, you know, yeah, a, a block of story. Yeah. Um, I think what we you're re it's really interesting that you talk about timing and travel. So mm -hmm. it was like um, I guess what we understood is that moving from the kitchen wall <laughs> to a real living in time piece of media. Yeah. Is, you know, there's a huge place to go, and yes. the only way you're going to get there is by testing it, just like you do in a rehearsal. Testing it. D does that tone entering work? How are, the, how are the audience feeling exactly? Are they, do they feel like I'm with them? Um, you know, I discovered doing live theatre that if I, if I suddenly ask them a question without prepping them, they'd be like, whoa, you know, yes. ready, hold back. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I think um, kind of we went from, yeah, a, a kind of traditional map on the kitchen wall. Rue had an idea of the kind of digital version of that that he wanted to create. Um, we we applied it to a specific. We wanted to apply it to a specific yeah. story. Um, I mean, I you know we talked about these things for a while, and actually this story was very similar to that. The, again, the story that I that, that that first YouTube thing, which was me mucking around with the phone essentially in two thousand eight, pre two thousand seven, I think eight to eight pre iPhone. I had a Nokia phone. We were living in Canada. Just made a film around the house, and I think we might come back to kind of spatialized narratives, but it was yeah. it was about moving between rooms and different things happening in different rooms. And it was just made on the fly. And, you know, we, the same mistakes that we all make, which are, you know, individual sections are too long and, you know, you want to go back and hone them. And, and um, but, you know, contained within a head and within my head, and even that as sort of six different story islands or clips, that was, that was still quite a lot. And this, as we started to develop this idea of a, a guy going to work on his birthday and traveling across Bristol, another kind of spatialized narrative, you follow him to work. And we wanted to be able to use that as a way of exploring what the production process would be. If you were building a tool, what, how would you build a tool that supported the production workflow so that it actually delivered something for a producer working in television or a corporate production or whatever, um, or an independent filmmaker? So, so we talked about it a lot. And Kate, finally, a, produ a film producer friend of Kate said to her about another project, nothing is real until it's on paper. And eventually she said to me about this, nothing is real until it's on paper. So we just literally ripped up pieces of paper, stuck it on the wall, and then tried to find the digital tools that we could map that into that would contain all the data. And there are a few different things out there, but they don't, they essentially just provided slightly less tactile, slightly less visible, viewable versions of what we already have on the wall, but still down on the wall from however long, however many <laughs> year and a half ago from when we put it up on there originally. And I and know, years. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully and we've got the other images uh, we might show it, later of where yes. it went. Yeah. <laughs> and and that and it's and, and to some degree that's about taking those things from the wall and putting them into digital so that putting them into a digital version and like Kate said, then being able to put the video in there, then be able to put the script in there, all of the details and the choices and how the stylings of any on-screen choices would be. So, you know, like in a project file for a, a non-linear editing video program that you're using to make a normal television program or a film, you know, it's all there in a kind of, in a place. And then you can play through it and see 
how it works immediately. And we mm. wanted to have something, well, I think one of the things that we realized as we scripted it long before we shot any video and we went out and did some recce's for the locations because they're just around where we are. But we realized that you needed to be able to visualize it, not just on the wall and the script, but actually be able to play through how it felt before you even had any video. And now we're working with people who are using it and they're recording essentially little scratch performances on Zoom, like recording themselves on a Zoom camera or yeah. recording voice memos and just being able to step through little radio plays like you would in an animation workflow, I guess, to to be able to say, how does this feel? How's this going to work? And then it really, it suddenly the dimension of time enters as well as paper and the dimension of space. And you have you have a much stronger idea of how the how it'll leaks well what the experience will be like for a, a player viewer yeah. so if someone is is already a creator and they're making a jump i mean you look at final draft you look at movie magic you look yeah. at practices that have actually been institutionalized in software yeah. and then yeah. in visual effects you look at previs um yeah. and, but what you've done now is sort of taken all of that and expanded it into, I guess, I would say enabling branching narrative. Yeah, and and I'm very, from my own experience, again, working in professional workflows, I just want to use the tools that already exist, right? I don't want to rebuild a video editor. I don't want to rebuild a, a scripting tool. I don't want to build anything that I don't have to use. I want to use the things that people are comfortable with. Unfortunately, in Final Draft, you can't even kind of create hyperlinks within it at the moment, right? So, you know, it's great and also has, some deficiencies and similarly all of the other things so providing filling the gaps for people to be able to work with branching narratives in this way and coming up with some tips for how you can structure experience-based tips and how you can structure scenes and scripts so that you don't go mad while you're shooting it you know and, yeah. and in a lot of sequences you might have multiple different versions you know three four different versions maybe sometimes more of the same scene or sequence that you want to be slightly different depending on what other decisions you've, the viewer has made up to that point. If it's drama, it might be one thing. If it's nonfiction, it might be another. If it's a learning experience, it might be something else. And But you want to be able to know what those things are in one place when you're there shooting it really easily so you can just see what the differences are and capture it all in one place. I think a lot of people have the idea that making branching narrative things is going to be this sort of endless spiral of spiraling costs and spidering out diagrams I always wave my hands around too much when I'm talking about it and it scares people but it, it, it you, you feel like you're going to be shooting 10 times as much that's yeah. not the way it works because you're using because you have all the efficient you're just taking multiple takes essentially and if you can keep that stuff not yeah. always but you are often taking multiple takes or reusing re-editing multiple bits of archive you know the same bits and, and there's such joy in that we we yeah. made a film during lockdown with a young director who'd never worked in this medium before and he wrote his script in final draft um, and then I put it into Stornoway. And the moment he could actually play through it and imagine how it worked, he came up with all sorts of little, lovely little ideas. He, the jokes became funnier. You know, he became excited about what the actors could do on the shoot because it was kind of organized, you know, because, um, and, and we all know how, you know, I think that, that love of, that's where my kind of love of improvisation was. It's like, you know, you have to really rehearse performances so that they are perfect. But if you've, built in the improvisation, um, you often find a lot of gems along the way. And I think it was the idea of building that into Stornoway that you can you could actually map those out so that you can capture them in, in, your, in your film. We had planned, um, first, first I want to say there was a professor at Stanford named Roger Knoll who said, it's never the incumbents that come up with the new business models. It, it's right. never the incumbents because the whole reason something develops is because the incumbents are missing it. Yeah, and it's absolutely. not there. Um, but Allison doesn't know what I'm about to do. But I think, you know, we wanted to wait for the second half of the episode. But what I would love to do, because we usually run about a half hour for each episode, what I'd love to do is kind of end our episode with the Stornoway. Um, I guess it's a tutorial, right, Rue, that you sent? Yeah, the three minute getting started video. Right? Yeah, That's so video. so I'd love to run that and, uh, and let me uh <laughs> let me challenging my my directorial capabilities so let me uh let me get that going <laughs> hi how are you i'm ru how 
I'm creator of stornaway.io and I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to show you where things are so that you can get started straight away. Click the button on the dashboard to create a project. Give it a name, but don't worry about filling in the details or the settings at the moment. You can come back to that. This is your story map, and this is where all the magic happens. The core element of Stornoway is the story island, which is our term for scene or a location, maybe a short clip, depending on what you're working on, a block of story. Make more story islands with the add island button at the top, and then lay them out here like post-it notes on a wall. Double click in them to jot down a name or ideas in the description box and then drag arrows to connect them up however you want. The arrows show the on-screen choices that a viewer will take to move on at the end of each island. This is the sidebar which you open and close with this button at the top right and it contains all of the information about each island. Description, the on-screen choices, where you upload your video file, game logic, story notes and an interactive script if you need one. To play test your story immediately, click play at the top. The private player will open up. This is visible only to you and your team. You can do this even before you've uploaded any video. We'll just show you this placeholder video instead with a helpful description over the top if you want. The buttons you see here are in the default style. They're set to appear for 10 seconds at the end of this island, but you can add up to four choices in different positions and styles and colors and timings or upload any button images of your own. And here as it moves on, you'll see a video clip that I've uploaded for the next island. I've used the same button style here, but different colors. And I've set them to move on when clicked rather than waiting for the video scene to finish. This playtesting and previs is one of the most revolutionary impacts of Stornoway. No more waiting until the end of the project to test and see if the story works, which has ruined so many interactive projects in the past. Stornoway.io will save you masses of money and time and hugely improve the end result. On the left of each island, you can see our tabbed variants. Variants are alternative versions of an island. Perhaps there's different actions or dialogue depending on what the viewer has seen up to this point in the story. In any other flowchart tool, these different versions of an island would be shown as separate boxes, which quickly gets very messy and unreadable. But Stornoway's patented variant system keeps everything neatly together for writing and editing and shooting. To share your project with your team, click Settings and Add Collaborators. And when it's done and you're ready to share it with the world, click Publish and either publish it to a stornoway.io page or embed our fantastic player on your web page or app. When you create a project, you're confronted with a blank page. Don't be afraid of the blank page. Get stuck in. Create some islands, link them up, upload some phone videos or stock footage or whatever. Have a play and share. It is magic when you see it come together, just with a drag and a drop. My suggestion is keep it simple and short and give the viewer a chance to watch and replay. That's where the real joy comes in. Interactive filmmaking used to be difficult and expensive. With Stornoway.io, it is easy and fun. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have fun and I hope you have a great day. That is excellent. <laughs> it's so it. much <laughs> it's so much easier when you see it. Yeah, it really is. I know we should have started with that. I always try to whenever we have calls with people, as we say, just watch that for three minutes and then we can just get to the get you know, get beyond what it, what it, what it is, what's happening on screen. Yeah. So when we come back in the next episode, um I know Allison and I have discussed this. We want to know how filmmakers are going to learn this, what the community is. I'm just giving a preview, Allison, of what we'll discuss next, of how film studios or individuals uh, are using this and how, if a community is building, how do people become part of that community? And is there anything right now, any product that's out? And I know we have some demonstration, which we'll show next time. but from third party filmmakers that people can watch now? Is that a question now? So yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll put that link, we'll put that link below. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, the projects we're working with, with TV producers are obviously in development and we can't talk about them. But uh, do you mean in a wider sense? Because um, obviously there's the kind of Netflix pioneer. Well, we know that this is like just launched. Yeah. But yeah. If, if I were using this, I 
I would want to post it somewhere at least for your feedback from the creators. I would want to I, I would want to get feedback from fellow filmmakers as to what they thought. So that's kind of what I'm asking. Is there a lab where where people can watch different what different users have done yet? I know it's so new that there may not be, but yeah. just it's before really we do our next episode, if our viewers have the chance to watch some of this and yeah. post some questions and comments, we'll answer those questions in the next episode. Yeah. Great. Well, let's prov we'll provide you with a couple of links rather than read the links out loud. All um, right. So you will see the links below. Absolutely. So in a couple of, I mean, just to get set some context for the kind of things you might send you, the, the, you know, there are some very, we've, we've been, while we're working with some very high budget producers, producing things that are going to take absolutely ages to produce. We've also just in the first couple of months been working on quick turnaround projects with theater companies and independent filmmakers. So there are a couple of things that are really good examples of what you can do in a really quick, low budget way. You know, there's a theater yeah. company that made something in 72 hours with nine actors and, and 30 different scenes that they just put together, which they've never made anything on film before. And they were able to just put it together and make it look great sort of way and learn a lot from it. And are now working on something bigger and uh, that they're going to be working on at the beginning of next year, be producing at the beginning of next year. And an independent, independent filmmaker, uh, Kate talks about Terrell Williams, who made a comedy idea about a guy who uh, was in a Zoom meeting with his boss. It was a very, very lockdown-y story, uh, having to decide whether to lie or not lie. Um, so, And yeah. I think in terms of the community, I mean, obviously there are people who've been working in all sorts of areas of innovation, multi-platform transmedia, um, I think what what we've started to see, because we're relatively newbies to this game, is that um, there's a lot of, we're definitely connecting directly with people. So, uh, you know, initially it's like, talk to us. On Twitter. Um, and then we're talking, yeah. we're, we're putting people together. There are interesting partnerships happening. You know, it's a really exciting time. I think we've, we're working on our delivery to different platforms. So we've had quite a lot of games people getting in touch about, delivering to Steam and yeah. and 360 videos. So yeah, well- that, that idea of a, The idea of a hub and a kind of knowledge, a learning, a center of excellence and a kind of community of practice is something we're really interested in. We were just talking to the BBC about it at the end of last week actually, yeah. um, because they've been working on something internally themselves. So Excellent. developing that and people who are interested in that would be great. If anybody goes to stornaway.io, Mm -hmm. Can they see life moves pretty fast there? Because I really like that. And I like it a lot because it doesn't take itself too seriously, right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. an interactive narrative is very serious questions. And honestly, like, I don't care about the characters enough to decide what breakfast cereal they have. I don't know them well enough. I'm not invested enough in the story. And the way you put together, life moves pretty fast. You didn't take yourself too seriously. And I kind of like the idea you're like bunking off of work for the day, right? <laughs> Like, oh, do I do this or that? There is a playfulness to the entire tone of that story, which yeah. personally I really enjoyed clicking along and playing. So I know you have the um the I would... with the Zoom guy. Yeah. yeah. Are they both on your website? I would go to, yeah. to go directly to lifemovesprettyfast.io to go and see Life Moves Pretty Fast. It's really fun and give yourself. I mean, there's about 45 minutes worth of film in there. Give yourself 15, 20 minutes to take Wolfie through a few different journeys across Bristol on his birthday and give him some different things to do. Um, <laughs> there, and are, there are some surprises. There are, it's funny, but also there's some weird meditative well, moments. It's this brilliant. is something everyone can do before the next episode and they right. can ask like you questions about. Yeah. And so that's great. And, and you know, you talk about the, the network. I just want to like acknowledge Tracy Swedlow because I got yes. an email after she had talked to you and she said, Brian, you are going to love Rue and Kate. They are right up your alley. They've got tools. You must call them. And I, I called Allison and I said, so have you heard of these people? And she was like, yes, I work with these people. Yes, I know them. They'd be great to have on the show. So I just want to say thank you for being here today. And, um, and so we're sending people to lifemovesprettyfast.io, yeah. which yeah. we'll put in the link below as well right. as stornaway.io, where the explanation of the software is. And yep. uh, when we come back the next time, which will be in a week from this, when we come back the next time, I I'd love for us to get into the nitty gritty of it 
and all the possibilities of how different filmmakers, uh, TV producers, even even user generated content, because I can just see yeah. it's so easy to use that it could actually revolutionize storytelling at, at its most democratic level. So I just want to say, and Allison, I realized I didn't mean to control the conversation today, but <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, but I got excited and we all know what happens when Brian <laughs> gets excited. I've had many conversations with Kate and Rue over the last six months. So um, I <laughs> might be building up for the next one. I want to dig into the next thing because this is a perfect prime opportunity for you guys because it's been building for a while and I felt like when Netflix started to play with interactive it was yeah. like an industry recognition and this I think is your springboard moment so that's what I want to get into the next time that's we talk. great yeah we didn't name check that specifically but that has been that sort of timed alongside already we'd already decided to start moving along this it's been a really it's been really great them doing their pioneering well speaking work. of time we're out of it <laughs> okay <laughs> So thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next episode. See thank you, you so much, both of you. Bye. Bye.